Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dave with Alum House Sound. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a Q&A and this question comes from HodgePodge Network. So he has a question about how to physically route and, and connect a matrix fed subwoofer. So let's take a look here at the console. We can show you how to handle this really quick and, uh, and then talk about the connections at the end. All right, so as we dive into the console here, the first thing to keep in mind is that a matrix is a mix of buses. So this scene is blank, but if we come over here on the far left to our bus masters, this is where we would have any buses made. We've also got our effects buses. And if we come over to matrix, we could select matrix one, hit sends on fader, and now if we wanted to, we could add in a bus or multiple buses into our matrix. Now with this discussion, we're just looking to take our mains, our main mix, and get a feed into this matrix to feed our subwoofer. So we don't actually need these. We're gonna keep and make sure that these are all turned down. We'll hit sends on fader. And so now all we need to do is come in and hit the select button on our stereo bus. And on the stereo bus, this is actually considered a bus, so we can add this into a matrix. And all we need to do is hit home and then page over to the sends tab. Now, some of the things we want to keep in mind, we're going to, we're going to zoom in here in just a second, but if we send the signal uh, pre-fader into the matrix, then we have the ability to keep our sub level higher or lower um, than the main mix, but if we turned our main mix down, we would still have subwoofers kind of banging away. So I tend to do this post-fader, which means our tap point will be after this stereo main fader, you still have the ability to use a volume here and we'll do that tap point at the output and we'll discuss that in just a second as well. So, so first off what I wanna do is just make sure that this fader is down all the way uh, and then you're gonna have your main fader wherever it's gonna live. You could come in here and, uh, and change the scribble strip for matrix one, but let's dive into the screen up here, get a little closer and see what our next steps are. All right, so here at the screen, what we're looking at now is on the sends tab, you can see that there are the six different matrices that we can send our main mix into. Our mixes are not linked right now, but they are pre-selected as post fader, post fader, and post fader. Again, we talked about that we do wanna have post fader, but if you wanted to change that, we would come over here, use the down arrow key, and now we can change that. You can see here, post, uh, we could go to pre, or we could go to pre uh, post EQ, pre EQ. You've got some different options there depending on what you want. We want ours to stay as post fader. Uh, again, if you were to change this, then you would push, and that would that would lock it in. But we're going to go to post fader. We want it to stay as post fader, and we're going to come back up with our arrow key, and all we're going to do is feed our main mix here. We're gonna turn the send up. We're gonna turn it all the way up to zero. That's gonna take a direct copy amount of our main mix into our matrix. So there we go, we're at zero. You can see it uh, turned up right there. And that's now gonna send the mix from our stereo bus into our matrix. Now the next thing we wanna do while we're here is we're gonna come over and we're gonna to go to the routing tab. So we're gonna hit routing. And then we're gonna go over to the outs. And on the outs tab, we're gonna pick one of our 16 outputs to send this mix out of. Typically, if you've got the full size console, 15 and 16 are the main left and right outs. And what I like to do is just come up to 14 here and we can use our encoder knobs to go to matrix matrix one, we're gonna press that. And then this here, this is where again, this is setting the tap point for the output. And uh, we talked about where we could do pre-fader. If we do pre-fader in this scenario, then all of the levels that are sent from our main bus into the matrix, that's the only volume control we have. For us, we wanna be able to use that volume knob or the volume fader for the matrix to further refine things. So we're gonna come down to post fader and we will push it, and now that routing is set right there. Uh, that's gonna go out, output 14, and the only last thing you wanna check while you're here is if we come over to XLR, 
We could then see here, based on our outputs, remember we're output 14, we could come down here and make sure that we see that output 14 is set from matrix 1 and it's post fader. Now if you're using AES 50 uh, for a stage box or anything like that, you would want to just do your normal settings where we have AES 50A here, and this would track our outputs on the first two layers there. So that's the routing. Now let's back back out and take a look at the fader and some other options. All right, so at this point, we have our routing done. We've sent our main mix into our matrix one. The last thing to do is to play some music after you've connected output 14 to whatever amplifier or speaker you're gonna use. We're gonna start playing. You would see music come through the main mix. You would also see the meters light up here for matrix one. And because we did our tap point as post fader, this is now a volume fader or knob for our subwoofer. So you wanna find some general settings where for me, I love keeping things at Unity. That just makes me feel better. It's easier to troubleshoot. And so if this is at Unity, then we have the ability to use the volume on the back of the subwoofer to refine the mix, or we could set the subwoofer at a zero point and then use this to adjust it. But the other thing that we have the capability of doing is some EQing on this matrix. So if we select the matrix and then we hit home, we can go to EQ, and now we have the ability to turn on our EQ, and we could do our normal EQ settings. We can take our high, and we can turn it down, and this kind of takes the place of any potential DSP that you might need. Uh, we can look at this and say, okay, we're, we have a crossover point kind of set now around 100. We're gonna have this roll off. Uh, from 400 down. Uh, obviously, if you want a tighter, uh, a tighter dB slope on your EQ, then you may need to use a different tool. But you can refine this right here. You can, uh, you know, you could bring this down wherever you need to go. If you really needed like a bass boost, you could, you could turn the low end up if you needed to. I would typically avoid that, but. Um, Anyway, whatever your needs are, you want to run an RTA on your room, a real-time analyzer on your room to get it tuned right. But that EQ is a tool that you can use. You also have a compressor on here. So if you think that this is going to get really out of hand uh, with your mix and you want to make sure that you've got some compression built in before it goes out to your subwoofer, you could, in fact, turn the compressor on and you could, you could tidy things up and tighten it up there with a compressor because that is on the matrix. All right, well, that's just a short video. I hope this has helped you out. If it has, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, maybe even share this with somebody that you think would benefit from this information. Well, if you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'm always answering questions. If you need some one-on-one -on -one support, there's a link in the description where you, we can start a conversation outside of YouTube and, and get you helped out and squared away there. Well, that's it for this one. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.